you know, Jeff, you're, you kind of relate to somebody here. So Robert Tate was in the First World War. He was a medic. And I had, uh, I was a sol I was a soldier or I was a military mm -hmm. when I was in the, uh, the guardhouse. So. <laughs> yeah, well, he served in the First World War. He was a medical doctor. I mean, Robert Tate McKenzie is pretty much why we have physical education today in schools. Hmm. So he really pushed the importance of physical health and maintaining, um, you know, exercising, walking, and, you know, and I guess that makes sense because he was really good friends with James Naismith. Really good friends with James Naismith. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. yeah. Talking about. Um, so when he was a young lad, um, him and James Naismith played here mm -hmm. in this mill, and in 1910 he purchased it to make it his summer home. Oh, 1920 maybe, somewhere around that period, I think 1920. So after John Baird lost the property in a legal battle, this mill was empty. So mm -hmm. from the 1860s until he purchased it. So we're talking like 50 years. Ooh. And in pioneering times, you know, a building like this would not just sit empty. There would have been squatters, there would have been people coming here. Yeah. Um, so we really don't know that 50 year history. Now we know there have been drownings in the river. Mm -hmm. uh, we experienced children here. And of course, um, different types of male entities are picked up on. And it could have been from the loggers because this was a logging river. Mm -hmm. And loggers had drowning accidents. Yeah. So that 50 year history we don't know a lot about, but when Robert Tate McKenzie and James A. Smith were children, they played here. And that's where he fell in love with this area. With the place. So after the war, um, he purchased the property and he wanted it to be his uh, summer home, his nature retreat. So he enjoyed walking the trails. He kind of made this like a little paradise. And the upper social class, like William Wayne McKenzie King and Sir Robert Borton came here as, visitor, as visitors, among many others. Now, Ethel is kind of the main spirit here. So, in the 1970s, the Ottawa Journal um, wrote about the renovation workers because the museum was being created at that time in the mm -hmm. 1970s. And they were talking about how the tools would move around and experience activity here. This site is really known for poltergeist type of activity, including that door opening and closing. Um, and I had the world poltergeist come twice in the office. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of people associate poltergeist with something like a negative entity or something like that. It's not. No. It, it's, it's the physical movement of objects. Exactly. So this place has the lights turning on and off. I have numerous examples of the lights here turning on and off on their own. Um, whether it's from people coming to the public investigations or it's with us or leaving uh, cameras running overnight, which I do often here because I want to catch these things move around. Mm -hmm. um, what the staff here talk about most is like over the, you know, very long period this was a museum, they would experience things being out of place when they come in. So they'd set the alarm, leave for the night, come back in the morning and things, specifically the piano stool or chairs, or Robert Tate's walking sticks, which were in like a little tub over in the front, mm -hmm. um, would be moved around and out of place. And the alarm was set and nobody had been in to disarm. That's normal. Okay. <laughs> you have me in infrared? Yep. There you go. So that's because I just shut off the motion sensors. Okay. So they timed out and now we're in the dark. The craziest light experience I had here, um, I was, we just finished setting up for the public investigation. We're all chilling here, but just relaxing like we are right now. Mm -hmm. And a light turned on in the stairwell leading up to the gallery. Hmm. And we started looking around for the switch as we didn't know where that switch was. We searched everywhere, we couldn't find it. And then we finally find it and it was inside the closet under the stairs. Mm. That's where the switch was. And that would be the only way to turn on that light. Hmm. So that switch in the closet under the stairs. That's the only way to light it up. It's the only way to turn it on. Hmm. Um, Ethel is choosy about who she comes through to. Mm -hmm. um, 
her bedroom. So her and Robert slept in different bedrooms. Okay. Now that was kind of normal at the time. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when I was in Lunenburg recently, it was like that as well. So Victorian times, it was kind of normal for husband and wife to have their own bedrooms. Ethel's room is the one directly on the other side of that wall over there. And her portrait is there as well. Now both Ethel and Robert Tate did not die here. Robert Tate had a heart attack in Pittsburgh, hmm. in the States. Ethel, after Robert passed away, um, he, you know, she moved away and uh, passed away somewhere else. I forget where, I think like around Muskoka, if I'm not mistaken. Somewhere around there. Now, why are they still here? I don't think it's like an earthbound spirit thing. Like, they're stuck here. I think that they love this place so much that they come back. They came place. back, yeah. And, and that that's the the thing that um, Ken Mason, you know, you probably know Ken Mason. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Mason, that's what he said, that most of the time the spirits will go to a place where they felt comfortable. Yeah, if I, they're not stuck. <laughs> I think that there are, like, those stuck here, but I don't think Robert and Tate, um, just sometimes it feels void and they're not here, and all of a sudden they're here and they're interactive, and, you know, Ethel's very hospitable. She, you know, the thing she says is, I mean, I could play tons of clips of evidence, um, but, you know, she's nice, she's hospitable. That's why people feel more negative entity at the gatehouse and more pleasant here mm -hmm. because this was where they invited their friends of higher social class to come and stay and you know have the seances have night parties ethel was a pianist a grand pianist very mm. talented she wrote poetry she probably recited poetry played piano you know this was just a place to come and relax and enjoy yourself someone had an interesting theory one of our patrons who comes to the public investigations and she said like what if Robert and Ethel um, were homosexual and they were in a relationship to conceal their sexuality? Hmm. And when you look at Robert Tate's artwork and the detailed male physique, which is pretty much all he did in his art, if you noticed upstairs, yeah. you know, there's a lot of naked men. Um, separate bedrooms, they never had children, and she kind of proposed this, and you know, you start thinking, and you start looking at their relationship, and uh, I brought this up to the curator here, and she's like, I wouldn't be surprised. That could, because back in, back in those days, go they, to jail. yeah, and they would marry just to, like you said, as a front. Yeah, yeah, so just to conceal their, you know, and, and then what better place to, you know, have secret relationships than out in the middle of the conservation area in the woods. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, I'm not saying this is truth, but when this was shared with me and you, and you look back at the history and look at their relationship and who they were and what they did, um, you know, it's quite possible. Who knows? Yep, who knows? Something to ask in investigations and I don't think anybody has really truly uh, posed those questions. Um, I haven't personally, but... Well, we can... we could try. <laughs> and then again, it's none of our business, right? Like, what, what does that even matter? Yeah, what? Even though, if they were happy, and that's the most important thing. Ethel, I mean, it's described that she kind of gave up her life as a pianist, um, her own career as a musician, to be with Robert. Um, she used to tour Europe and play, so, you know, there's a bit of an expression that she kind of threw her life away for him, to mm. be in the marriage with him. Um, yeah, but John Baird, for sure, he comes around, he shows up here, I hear lots of stories on that. Um, the children here, I don't know who they are or what they're doing here, but people pick up on children here, you know, for sure, but the big thing is the lights. Mm -hmm. And this is just, it has a real relaxing feel here. Like it's not scary. 
any means. No, it's not. I, 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 I don't feel the same thing that I was feeling at the guard house. At the guard house, I was really feeling uneasy. But here, it's like, it's relaxing, it's welcoming, so. It's a, it's a pleasant type of environment, and, uh, you know, they, they really interact through spirit boxes here. That's something that I do notice, is that uh, a lot of the communication here is through spirit box devices. Um, REM pod stuff, cat ball stuff, especially around the piano. Now, that isn't her piano. Okay. They, they brought it in here after. Um, the stool, I'm not too sure. Now, a lot of the furniture in this this building, like what we're sitting on right now, was made by Robert T. McKenzie. Hmm. A lot of the original um, furniture stayed, and their book collection as well. A lot of the books on the shelves are books. from them as well. And there's also beautiful artwork up on the ceilings, and we don't know for sure. Um, they think that may have been from the family that moved in here in the 1960s and 50s. Hmm. So you hear a lot of footsteps, a lot of creaking here, a lot of faint voices. But it's very quiet because we're in the middle of the conservation area. It's really quiet. Super quiet. I'm going to put the IR on this camera. Because it's so peaceful that you could sleep. Yeah, oh, good. <laughs> Is there iron on that? I don't see any yep, iron on that. It's right here. <coughs> there you go. So we can put the camera right here. I don't know if you have any questions you can ask, but that's pretty much uh, it for here. Um, I said the, the lights turn on on their own. It happened for Rob when I had Rob here not too long ago. We had a a, a birthday uh, um, a birthday investigation. Oh, okay. For a long time patron G and uh, and he was here and he joined them and uh, gonna crack up spirit talker. And he was uh, going upstairs and he reached the top and all of a sudden uh, the lights turned on. Oh. <laughs> So, if Ethel is with us, I have a box right here that you can use to talk. Just use it and put your words in it. Robert? Ethel, have you been listening to us talking? That's normal. What was that? Your flashlight? No, it's a camera. Oh, it does a little beep? Yeah, it's a, it's like a GoPro. It, uh, it, it records like for a certain amount of time, stops, go back. Mm -hmm. so. I'm guilty. Guilty of what? Did you do something that wasn't supposed to? I have a question to ask you. Ethel or Robert, did you love person or watch yourself here? People of the same sex that you you were? And if, it, if you were, it's, it's perfectly fine with me. And we're on 20, 2023. Now it's totally normal. But I know back in your day, it wasn't. So I have a flashlight right here that you can use. I'm going to move it. I'm going to put it right here. Go. 
Not now. There you go. There you go. Why do you want us to go? We just got here. Didn't like the question that I asked? I'm sorry. But we just want to know. Ethel? Was she a friend of yours? Was she more than a friend? Listen for my voice. Yes, please. Something else that's experienced here a lot the staff they say they hear her singing like straight up they're alone here and hear her singing i would love to hear you sing ethel i heard that you were a wonderful musician and you have a wonderful voice i would love to hear it Want me to sing with you at all? Do you know Edith Piaf? Quand il me prend dans ses bras, quand il me parle tout bas, je vois la vie en rose. I would love to feel you. Can you come and touch me, please? And stick my hand out. Just come and touch it, please. Talking about us? Probably wondering who we are? Who we are? Well, we know who I am. Well, yeah, you know Elliot, but you don't know me. My name is Jeff. Farm. Farm. Border two farms. It's Mm-hmm. Do you mean by you had problems with the farmers around? Are we talking to Mr. Baird? John Baird? Is that you? Are you still upset about the f uh, uh, about the fact that people made you lost your mill?
Don't be afraid. My name is Jeff. Like you, Mr. Robert. I'm a veteran too. I then went to a war. I was a UN peacekeeper. Just flashed. Robert, if you're here, can you turn on the light in your studio so we can come upstairs and look at your artwork and the light? Not this one. The one in your studio. If you are here, I have a feeling why you turn on that light so much is so that people can see your artwork. Equal. If I, and if I can say, sir, your artwork is amazing. Your sculptures are just stunning. Really beautiful. Can you light up the light so we can go back upstairs and look at some more? want us in your room, you can turn on your light. I know that you can do it. We've seen it happen before. I would really love to see your room, Miss Ethel. We're not at peace. Hmm. If there's any children here, can you play with us a little bit? You want to play a game? Can you make a knocking sound for us? Do some knocking sounds and we have to find you. I'm hearing very faint knocking sounds. Can you do it a little louder? Out. <laughs> so what is it? Out. Out. And it's and it said, go earlier on. We're not welcome. Could be John. Mr. Baird, why aren't we welcome in your mill? Mr. McKenzie did something really beautiful with your mill. I know that you're upset because you lost it. My stomach. <laughs> Don't be afraid. my first time but I will probably and surely come back and see you because I'm really 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 impressed by Mr. McKinsey's work upstairs you know by being in the military myself I I really like and I uh, That's my way to honor you guys. Guilty. Guilty. But this app is spitting up randomized words. Yes, yes. So it works like the obvious where you're hoping something starts to connect, but everything is really. It said, I'm guilty and not guilty. Are you guilty or something that you shouldn't have done?
that in your George. George. In your society back then, it wasn't really well seen. What the heck was that? I heard like, like a cat. Oh my God, it was like, sure it wasn't your stomach. No. It was like, there. Is there a spirit of a cat? Can you tell tell us something really significant into that that box just to make sure that it's really you? Can you tell us your name? Can you say Hethel into this box? Oh, sorry. Or Robert? Or John. <laughs> well, Robert and John are two very common names. So I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. Okay. So that's why you, you're not responding and you're not doing anything. Is that right? Can you turn on the flashlight if I'm right? Is it Hethel that doesn't want to talk? Or Robert? Or John? Mr. Prime Minister, is it you? Surely if he liked the place, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Robert, are you still hosting socials here in the afterlife? Do you come here with company? Give them a tour of your beautiful summer home? Are your friends Mr. Neesmith and Mr. King? Mr. Borden, Mr. Borden, do they come and visit you in the afterlife? Five heard a knock upstairs. Five. You heard a knock upstairs. I heard a thump. Robert, would you like Jeff to join you upstairs? <laughs> Flashlight turn on, right on come. Yeah, it looks like yes. So do you want me to go upstairs, Mr. M Mr. McKenzie? Well, okay then. Just gonna grab my phone. Let you have your solo time. Yep. <sighs> it seems to be like Rob is on one up there by himself. He didn't want? <coughs> Well, standing when he went up there by himself, that's when uh, the lights turned off. <laughs> standing behind you. <laughs> well, this artwork is just amazing, guys. Look at this. Look at this statue. It's just amazing.
Mr. Mr. McKenzie, your one incredible sculpture, sir. It's it's just amazing what you did. You want me to sit right here? I'm gonna sit right here on the ground and try to communicate with you, okay? Died a long time ago. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about that. I hope that you had a really good life, sir. Put the machine right here. There we go. There we go. I have a device in my hands that I'm gonna use. It's called a recorder. It's called a digital recorder, okay? With this, I can catch your voice. So, Let's try it, okay? There you go. Please come into talk into the, this box. Mr. Baird, is that you? Can you come and say hello into the box I have in my hands? Okay then, we'll listen to check if I can hear you. <laughs> can't see shite. It's this late. <sighs> there it is. Please comment. Exercise me. Why? Oh. Exorcise or exercise? Thank you for the knocking. The forest is home. And I heard knocking. Thank you. Can you do that again, please? And what did it say? We exorcise you. Okay. Why do you have to exorcise me? I'm not a devil, I'm not a demon, I'm just, <laughs> just a guy, <laughs> just a guy who wants to communicate with you, that's all. So much heartache. Oh, I'm sorry. What kind of heartache? 
Did, did, did you have the heartache because your heart was, well, your statues are all over the world and even that magnificent piece that it's an Indiber, Indiber, <laughs> it's Scotland, you know, I'm French, I'm sorry. And yes, I'm French Canadian, I'm from Quebec, bonjour. John, if it's you, you said John on my device. If it's you, can you knock, please, again? If it's you that, that knocked before? I would really love to hear you. Thank you. Night alive. The night is alive. Night alive. Yes, the night is alive. Thank you for that knock. Can you do it again, please? One clear one. Oh. Wasn't clear, but it's like just teasing. Come on. Don't be teasing. Can you go like that? Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I just want you to knock. That's all. I just want you to knock to show me that you're here with me. I can feel you around me. It's cold. I got like cold all they around. They keep secrets here. Oh, okay. Well, Mr. McKinsey and Mrs. Ethel, if you had secrets, that's yours. And I'm not here to judge you. And in my opinion, it's perfectly fine. You are happy. As long as you are happy. I don't, get, I don't have anything, I don't have any devices with me. I just have my AVP recorder, dopes, cameras, spirit, spirit talker, and that's it. Can you do one more, one last clear knock just before I go, please? I want to come back to, to see you and I want to come back and communicate with you. I want you to feel really at ease with me. And John, can you please, that would be awesome, turn on the light so I can see all your art. 
just before I go. Can you do this for me, please? I'm listening to everything. <laughs> and I don't doubt it. But from one veteran to another, can, can you do this for me, please? Light up this place so I can see those beautiful sculptures that you did. It's just amazing. I would love to have that kind of talent. Camera. But I don't have that talent, so. Unfortunately not. Thank you. It's really quiet, guys. It's so quiet, it's eerie. <laughs> Do you think I'm real? Yes, yes, you were once a human being, but now you're a spirit. You're the spirit of somebody that was once here. And I really appreciate everything that you have given me. Even, even though if it wasn't much, I really appreciate it. And I would, I would love to come back. And the next time I come back, I just hope that <laughs> you're gonna remember me and come and chat some more. What do you think of that? Is that a deal? Stop the camera. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Well, yes, I will stop the cameras, but I just, please, please, just one last time. Just one last thing. So I can just, just light up the, the room. And by lighting up the room is showing me your art, showing me everything that you have here. So I can share it to the world. I'm pretty sure that the world knows about your art, sir. Well, I think that's going to be it for me, guys, because I've always said it. They're not circus animals, animals, and we cannot force them to do what Glenn. <laughs> Who's Glenn? Is that a friend of yours? So, yeah, guys, we cannot always ask them to perform for us, to do stuff like if they don't want to, it's up to them. It's not up to me, it's up to them. So, I hope you enjoyed this little episode, kind of relaxed compared to the last one. <laughs> that was amazing, but really wonderful place, guys incredible place beautiful place come and visit the museum everything's gonna be down in the description everything's gonna be done in the credits 
um, come and visit. Obvious. Yes, it's obvious. <laughs> come and visit and come and see the artwork of uh, Robert Tate McKenzie. It's just amazing. Uh, seeing that old mill that was made into a house. Be careful in here. Yes, I will be. I will be. Thank you. And yeah. So until next time. Well, thank you for being here. And guys, thank you for the new subscribers. You guys are, are amazing. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. It helps me a lot. And don't forget to like. All right? Don't forget to like. So until then, I'll catch you on the next Paranormal Adventure. Bye-bye, guys. I love you all. Bye.